This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to the program. My name is Rick Renner. This is me and Paulina Renner, who is Paul's wife and the mother of a lot of our grandchildren. And we're coming to you from the Russian Renner kitchen. And today, Paulina, you're going to make beef stroganoff. But I want to tell our viewers where beef stroganoff comes from. It was prepared for Count Stroganoff, who lived in St. Petersburg when he got so old and his teeth were so deteriorated he could no longer eat beef. So his French chef, and it was very popular for wealthy people back in those days to have a French chef, he said, Count, I'll make you something that you can eat. And he took beef and he sliced it very thinly and created a brand new meal, which was associated with Count Stroganoff. And that's why we call it beef stroganoff. They prepared it for him when he really didn't have teeth to eat meat, which Paulina means you can eat beef stroganoff <laughs> even if you don't have teeth. But it's a wonderful, wonderful dish. And Paulina, tell us how you make beef stroganoff. Of course, I'm so excited about that. Traditionally, it's served with mashed potatoes, but you can also serve it with pasta. Okay, let's start. To make beef stroganoff, of course, we need beef, and this is a fillet, and it will be in creamy sauce, so we will need heavy cream, salt, pepper. I use smoked paprika, I like the taste of it, and I use a little bit of tomato paste, and of course, we will serve it with mashed potatoes. Okay, let's start. I'm gonna slice my beef in cubes. Now I'm gonna add some spices, some salt, pepper, and paprika. And I'm gonna mix it all together. Now it's gonna sit for just a little bit and we will be ready to fry it. The pan has to be hot. We're not boiling, we're frying our beef. So it has to be hot. We don't have to do it for very long. For maybe seven minutes. And you don't want to put too much so it will start boiling. I just fried my meat for seven minutes. You have, doesn't have to cook it for very long. And I'm gonna start cutting my onion and get it ready. Okay, my onion is ready to be fried. I'm gonna do it right now. You will use the same frying pan that you fried your meat in because we want all the flavor and juice from the meat to get into the onions. You can even scrape off the pan the leftovers from your meat. And we're gonna cook our onions for approximately five minutes before we do something else. Okay, now I'm ready to add my, a little bit of tomato paste and basically fry it with my onions to get rid of extra sour taste. So we'll just fry it. And I'm gonna put a, some butter. And I forgot to tell you guys that for the next step, I'm gonna use a little bit of flour just to fry it all together. So that's what we're gonna do. We will continue to fry for another four to five minutes. Now I'm gonna add some boiling water and some heavy cream. And let it cook on medium heat for another three to four minutes. Oh, look at that color. So beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna add my beef to my sauce. You don't need to fry it. You just need to bring it to a warm temperature and let it sit at the lowest heat 
before, like until you serve it. At the very end, I'm gonna add some salt and a little bit of butter to add a little um, glaze and shine to my sauce and just add a little more creamy texture. And I will turn my uh, stove off. Paulina, you did it. You made beef stroganoff. I did it. I think even Count Stroganoff would be able to eat this. I hope so. <laughs> even though he had no teeth. Oh, wow. But, Paulina, I have to taste it. Okay. How is it? It's wonderful. But, <laughs> in typical Russian fashion, you can put a little sour <laughs> cream on it as well. Russians love sour cream on everything. But this is beef stroganoff. And Paulina, I want to say thank you for fixing this. And if you would like to have this recipe, just go to our website where you can download it. But this week, I'm teaching about the healthy things that you need to be eating in your spiritual diet. So stay with me for the program. It's going to be good. But go to our website and download Paulina's recipe on beef stroganoff. Enjoy. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust. A message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner. I've been sitting here waiting for the program to begin. But I want to ask you, how did you enjoy what our daughter-in-law, Paulina Renner, just showed you about how to make beef Stroganoff. Did you know beef stroganoff is from Russia? It was created by the chef of Count Stroganoff in St. Petersburg. But beef stroganoff is so good. And if you'd like to have the recipe so you can make beef stroganoff at home, just like we make it here in Russia, just go to renner.org to the homepage. And there you'll see a place where you can click, go online, and you can download this recipe for beef stroganoff. But this week, we're really not teaching about how to make Russian food. We're talking about what you need in your spiritual diet. And that's why I want you to order my brand new series, which is called What You Need in Your Spiritual Diet. There are certain essential ingredients that you need in your natural diet for you to be healthy. And likewise, for you to be spiritually healthy, there are essential ingredients you need in your spiritual life. And that's what this new series is all about. It's very simple, very practical, but I think very powerful. And it comes with a great study guide. And we're also offering you this week our autobiography, which is called Unlikely. I really want you to have a copy of Unlikely because it's our testimony that God chose us. And wow, that seems so unlikely. I know all the strikes that were against me. I know all the issues that Denise had to deal with. And wow, if God could choose us, and if God could use us, then God can use anyone even if they feel like they are the unlikely one to be chosen. And we wrote this book to encourage you. So please order yours today. But you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And by the way, when you reach out to us, please, please, please let us know how to pray for you. Our prayer ministry is a place where miracles take place every day. When people call, they express their need. We get into agreement in prayer based on the Word of God. God hears us, God answers, and God does the most miraculous things in the lives of people. And if you need a miracle in your life, please call us or send us an email. We'll pray with you, and God will really move in your life. But this week, we're talking about what you need in your spiritual diet. And so far, we've seen number one, foremost, above everything else, you need to spend time with God. Then we saw that you need to be quiet and to pray. And being quiet is a real challenge for many people. So I would encourage you to review yesterday's program about how to carve out a few moments of quiet in your day every single day so you can hear the Lord and so you can get in touch with yourself. And while you're being quiet, you also need to pray. But today we're going to come to the third essential ingredient that you need in your spiritual life. Are you ready? Okay, get a piece of paper and a pencil, write this down. You need to do something for someone else. You say, Rick, 
that's an essential ingredient for my spiritual life? Absolutely. You need to do something for someone else. And you're going to see today that God has gifted you and you need to be using your gifts. The worst thing you can do is sit around and think about yourself. <laughs> and there's some people that just do that. They sit around, they think about themselves, they think about their problems. And you know, when all you do is sit around and think about yourself and your problems, it's like you're digging the ditch deeper and deeper and deeper. It seems like things are getting worse and worse and worse and worse. It's because all you're doing is thinking about yourself, your problems, your issues, my friends, that is not healthy for anyone, whether a Christian or a non-Christian. You need to get your mind off of yourself, but especially if you are a believer. Or how about people that just nonstop talk about themselves? Well, me and this. Well, my husband and this. Well, my kids and this. Well, our finances and well, we have this challenge. And when you talk to these kinds of people, sometimes it is overwhelming. You wonder, are you ever going to take a break? Are you ever going to breathe? It's like they never stop from the beginning to the very end. They talk, 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 talk about themselves and all their issues. And then at the very end of the conversation, when it's time for everybody to leave, they almost in a clumsy way ask, oh, you know what, time is up. None of you even asked you, how are you doing? Well, you know what? By that time, you're so exhausted, you don't want to tell them how you're doing, and you really don't think they want to know anyway, because all they've done is focus on themselves. My friends, that's not healthy for you. That's not healthy for your friends who have to listen to it. And I want to tell you, you need to get your mind off of yourself, and you need to do something for someone else. But this has always been a problem, because it's just a part of the human nature. And when we read to Philippians Chapter 2, verse 4, the Apostle Paul says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. I make it a habit in my personal life that when I meet someone, I immediately focus on them. I want to know who they are, who were their parents, how were they raised, what do they believe, what is their business, what is their dreams. I try to focus on them because we're called to serve others. But it's always been the tendency of human beings to focus on themselves. And here the Apostle Paul says, look not every man on his own things. This is a command. But every man also on the things of others, which means we need to get our minds off of ourselves and we need to start thinking of others. Then when you come to Philippians chapter 2 verse 19, the Apostle Paul makes commentary about Timothy and how precious Timothy is to him. And listen to what he says. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. And then listen to how he describes Timothy in verse 20. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. And then he describes others in verse 21. For all seek their own. It is truly a gift when you find a person that is more focused on others than he is on himself. But this really is the command of God. And I want to tell you that if all you're doing is thinking about yourself and your own issues, it is unhealthy for you. And for you to be spiritually healthy, you need to have the ingredient in your life, in your spiritual diet of doing something for someone else. And you need to try to do something for somebody else at least one time a day. But when you come to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9, Peter makes amazing statements about serving others and using the gifts which God has placed in our life. And when you come to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9, Peter says, Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Well, this looks like a very small verse. But in fact, this verse is jam-packed with insight. For example, when Peter says use hospitality, it is the Greek word philogenia. Now I want to tell you what this word means. The word philos is a Greek word which describes a friend or it means to be friendly. The word genos depicts an alien either living in or passing through a city or a foreign country and thus he is a foreigner or it could also be translated as a guest 
a stranger, or a traveler. But when you compound the two words together, here it's translated in the King James Version, use hospitality, but it is the Greek word philogenos. It depicts the attitude and actions of one who is helpful and hospitable to aliens in a foreign city or country. One who is helpful and hospitable to those who are out of their element, or one who's helpful and hospitable to strangers, or even one who's helpful and hospitable to anyone in a struggling position. This is really a command of Scripture. And it's a command of Scripture that we need to get our minds off of ourselves and look around us to see people that are out of their element, people that are really going through difficult times, and to see what we can do to help them. In fact, we are to befriend them. And it is a standing command of Scripture to all believers that we're to have an open heart mentality to see what we can do for others. But if you're just thinking about yourself, you're not going to have this mentality. And notice he says that we are to use hospitality one to another. In Greek, it is aleilus, which means one to another. And it describes a reciprocal behavior that is to be mutually exchanged between believers when a need arises. So we're to do this reciprocally to each other. And then he goes on to say without grudging. Listen to what the word without means. It is the Greek word anu, which is a preposition that means to do something in accompaniment, to do something in cooperation, or to do something parallel to another action. But in this verse, Peter uses it to command all believers, listen, not to sing a bad duet of helping others with a resentful attitude. This is the person who says, I'm going to do it, but I don't want to do it. That's the wrong duet. You should not serve others to the accompaniment of grumbling or grudging. And the word grudging that is used in this verse literally means to begrudge, complain, grumble, loathe, moan, and groan, or to quietly mutter resentment under one's breath. And in context, it pictures one who accommodates those who are struggling, but rather than doing it joyfully, he does it to the accompaniment of silent resentment, inward complaining, grumbling, or muttering under his breath. And let me give you the RIV of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9. Hold on to your seat and listen to this. Be reciprocally helpful and hospitable, especially to fellow believers who find themselves in a foreign or unfamiliar territory or who are out of their natural element or who are struggling in a struggling position. And do it without the accompaniment of begrudging, belly aching, groaning, grumbling, moaning, or griping under your breath. And then Peter adds in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And notice that the very first of verse 10, he says every man. In Greek, this is hekastos. It means every man without exception. And according to this verse, every man without exception has received the gift. The word gift is the Greek word charisma. The word charisma describes a grace-given gift, a gift that empowers you to do something you probably would not be able to do by yourself. It is a supernaturally given gift. And according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, every man without exception, that includes me, that includes you, every one of us has received a supernatural grace-given gift. God has empowered us and and has enabled us with a gift. And those gifts are not intended to be for us. Gifts are to be given to others. We're to serve each other with these gifts. And that's why he goes on to say, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And the word minister is the Greek word diakonia, which was a word used to describe a servant whose primary responsibility was to serve food and to wait on tables. It presents a picture of a waiter who painstakingly attends to the needs and wishes of a patron. It was this servant's supreme task to please clients. Therefore, he served honorably, pleasurably, and in a fashion that made the people he waited on feel as if they were nobility. This was a committed, professional server 
one who was zealously dedicated to doing his job on the highest level possible. And by choosing this word, Peter alerts you and me that God expects us to be passionately committed to using the gifts he has given to us in such a way that it pleases him and makes those who are being served feel as if they're kings and queens. That's God's will for us, that we excellently serve with the gift that he has placed in us. But if we're just thinking about ourselves, we're not going to be serving anybody else. Get your mind off yourself and begin to think about how you can use your gift to serve someone else. And notice that Peter also says we're to be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The word manifold is a Greek word which means assorted, diverse, various, variegated, or multicolored. And a form of this word manifold is used in the Old Testament Greek Septuagint to describe Joseph's coat of many colors. And Peter uses it here to denote the assorted, diverse, various, variegated, multifaceted, or multicolored gifts of grace that God has entrusted to his people. And here's the RIV of First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Listen to this. Accordingly, as every single one of you, without exception, has received a grace-given charisma, a gift, you need to continually minister and serve one another with those gifts to the best of your ability and with the highest possible standard. God has assigned this great responsibility to you, so administrate and manage what he has entrusted to you as outstanding managers of the assorted, diverse, various, variegated, multifaceted, and multicolored manifestations of the grace of God. All of that is in you. And God wants your flavor to show up in your life. But if you're just thinking about sitting and thinking about yourself, it's going to squash all those gifts in you. Get your mind off yourself. Begin to look for those who are around you who have needs and serve them without belly aching and begrudging it. And it will cause you to be set free from yourself. This really is an essential element that you need in your spiritual diet. But I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. Learning to eat correctly can make all the difference in the quality of a person's life. Eat wrong, and you'll be too skinny or too fat and unhealthy. Eat right, and you'll be healthy and strong. The same is true spiritually. But do you know the essentials you need in your spiritual diet so you'll be in good spiritual condition and be able to run a long and productive race in your life? In this simple and practical five-part series, What You Need in Your Spiritual Diet, Rick covers five essential ingredients you need in order to be spiritually healthy and strong. Rick will show you how to spend time with God, be quiet and pray, do something for someone else, say no to some things, stir up the gift of God inside you. This series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $10. We're also offering Unlikely, Rick and Denise's life story of how God chose their unlikely family to be used in a spectacular way in a foreign land. Rick says God enjoys using those whom the world would never choose. If you feel unlikely to be used for God's purposes, I believe this book will thrill your heart and help you stay the course. This history-filled autobiography, Unlikely, can be yours for just $25. And be sure to go to renner.org to download the free recipes for the tasty dishes that are prepared on this program. Don't miss these special offers, the series, What You Need in Your Spiritual Diet, the book, Unlikely, and free recipes. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I want to give you a report about what's happening in the construction of our new studio. Work still continues. It's taken a little bit longer than we anticipated because of all the sanctions that have stopped materials from coming to Russia, but we're doing it step by step. And today they're installing the fireplace, which is going to be the centerpiece of this big room where we're going to be filming programs. But hey, there's more than this. Let me show you. Well, I know you can't tell from what it looks like right now, but this really is gonna be one of the smaller studios, and this is gonna be Denise's studio, because Denise is reaching women everywhere with her programming. And right from this spot, 
Denise is going to be sending her teaching to women all over the world. But hey, there's another set in addition to this one. This is our third studio in this new building. You may say, why do you need three studios? Because we're filming a lot of programs. Right now, we can only film one program at a time. We have to set it up, take it down, but this will enable us to do multiple things at one time. But on both floors of this building, there are multiple offices. In fact, there are 18 offices, and in all of these offices, people are going to be doing editing, writing, producing programs, working with our network, and it's not about buildings, it's about people. People need the teaching of the Word of God. But right now we're in phase three of our ministry, which is paying off our Tulsa ministry headquarters. We wanna pay it off because the moment it's paid off, all of those funds will be released for us to broadcast the teaching of the Word of God around the world. And that's really our goal, to get the gospel and to teach people the Bible all over the world. They're just crying out for it and they're waiting for that signal to come with the answer that they've been seeking. So please help us as we finish phase three to pay off the Tulsa facility. Well, this week we've been looking at what you need to have in your spiritual diet. We saw on Monday that you need to spend time with God. Then we saw on Tuesday that you need to be quiet and you need to pray. Today, we've seen that you need to get your mind off yourself and do something for someone else. And when we come back tomorrow, we're gonna to discover that there are some things you need to be saying no to so you can say yes to all the right things that God wants you to do. But hey, I want you to order the entire series, which is called What You Need in Your Spiritual Diet. And I remind you that it comes with a wonderful study guide. This will be great for you or great for anyone who's really growing in the Lord and they want to know what they need to have in their spiritual diet. And we're offering you this week our autobiography, which is called Unlikely, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth. My friends, God has a journey for you. And if you feel you're unlikely, then you are the one that God wants to use. Order this. It will really encourage you. And when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you. And I want to pray for you right now. Put your hand on your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would help my dear friend to get his or her mind off of themselves and to start thinking how they can serve others and that those marvelous grace-given gifts you've placed in them will begin to flow through them to others, blessing others and setting them free from themselves as they serve others with these wonderful gifts. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'll be back tomorrow. It's going to be good. But please remember Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4, which says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.